behind me. Hog shed's the name of my little shop there. Uh, hey, I'm uh, all dressed up and ready to go. Gonna try out uh, all 60 miles or so today and see how everything holds out. Also got a place I want to stop and show you guys. So hang in here. Check this one out. Bye. Well, we're gonna start this off right here underneath the freeway exit. If you were coming down the freeway, Interstate 84, you would turn off towards Sun Valley, Idaho. Then you're going to go all the way up to a hot plant called Idaho Sand and Gravel. You're going to turn right there and you will just continue on that road until you come to a stop sign, which you'll see here, and you're going to hit Highway 25. I will stop this or slow this down at every corner so you can see where to go. The Minidoka War Relocation Center was in operation from 1942 till 1945 and one of ten camps at which Japanese Americans, both citizens and resident aliens, were interned during World War II. Under provisions of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order 9066, all persons of Japanese ancestry were excluded from the west coast of the United States. At its peak, Minidoka House 9,397 Japanese Americans, predominantly from Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. The Minidoka War Relocation Center consisted of 36 blocks of housing. Each block contained 12 barracks, which themselves were divided into six separate living areas, laundry, facilities, bathrooms, and a mess hall. Recreation halls in each block were multi-use facilities that served as both worship and education centers. Minidoka had a high school, a junior high school, and two elementary schools, Huntville and Stafford. The Minidoka War Re Relocation Center also included two dry cleaners, four general stores, a beauty shop, two barber shops, radio and watch repair stores, as well as two fire stations. The U.S. Army opened military service to Japanese Americans in 1943. Enlistees from Minidoka accounted for 25% of total volunteers, and Minidoka suffered more casualties, male and female, than any other camp. The Minidoka internees created an honor roll to acknowledge the service of their fellow Japanese Americans. Although the original was lost after the war, the honor roll was recreated by the Friends of Minidoka group in 2011 following a grant from the National Park Service. Located in the Magic Valley of South Central Idaho and Jerome County, the site is in the Snake River Plain, a remote high desert area north of the Snake River. It is 17 miles northeast of Twin Falls and just north of Eden in an area known as Hunt. The site is administered by the National Park Service of the U.S. Department of the Interior and was originally established in the Minidook Internment National Monument in 2001. Its elevation just under 4,000 feet above sea level. Well, trying to see if this thing's working. Hello, I guess it is. It is windy, very windy. Uh, where we are. Hunt Relocation Center. This is not a proud time in our uh, history. That's for sure. This is where we brought uh, Japanese, Americans, and uh, during World War II and stuck them out here. Looks like I gotta walk over there a bit. I'll walk as best I can. This is a picture of the camp entrance. I guess that's guard shack. We're standing right here, it says. Where's my finger? Right there. 
Now they've rebuilt that guard shack. That wasn't there when they first started to build re uh, con construction. What do you call it? Rebuild this place. That wasn't there. Because when I was a kid, there wasn't much out here at all. So Highway 25 there must have not been there. Let's see what we got in this one. Visitors Center. I don't know how many people they brought out here. Let's see if we can find the sign that says how many. I don't even know what that is. I know that's not Snake River. That must be a canal. There's a, a little better view of the area. These houses and all these buildings were moved off of here after World War II. Matter of fact, my father bought one of them and had it moved uh, into a little town of Buell and he remodeled it and it's still being used as a home now. I'm sure it's a lot nicer than it was when they gave it to these guys. Or forced these guys to be here. Looks like 10,000. I'm going to pause this right here so you can read it because you probably read better than I do. there I think it is. It seems people walking that way gonna lock up the bike. But first I want to show you something on the bike. Yeah this is uh, my first halfway decent trip. I've been running around town on the bike. Uh, if you guys have been following me you understand uh, about the knee surgery and uh, I had my last physical therapy session yesterday and everything's a good good for go except for my left leg is still not quite where I want to so I had to change do a little modification there on my shifter link shifter on the back I couldn't quite get my heel up on there with my boots because my boots are taller work boot heels than tennis shoes so I just took the rubber thing off there and it works great so we're out for a spin Good. I'm actually going to try to walk over there and see what I can see. So hang in here. No need for you to walk all the way over with me. Don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'm pointing right towards the sun. But what this says is Minidoka National Historical Site. And it's showing the loop. We got to go. It says I got to keep my pets on a leash. I didn't bring my pet. So, let's try that loop. Hopefully I can make it. These boots ain't made for walking and neither are my knees right now. But let's give it a try. As you can tell, the new microphone didn't work worth a damn. What I'm telling you right here is my dad bought some barracks that looked just like that. They cut them up into smaller sections. And my dad moved it about 40 miles away from there and turned it into a very nice home. My grandmother lived there a long time and then they sold it and someone else is still living in it. This is the honor roll that they uh, put up for all the people from this area in this camp that joined and fought for our country even though the rest of their relatives were locked up in there. They were good American citizens. My father was in World War II. He fought in the Philippines. He said he never did shoot anybody, he hopes. 
He shot at somebody once when he was on guard duty, and he says he sure hopes he missed. Like most soldiers, I guess. This little object, uh, some kid would uh, had dug it up, and when he seen me coming, he took off a running. There he goes. I don't think that was part of anything. Probably just some junk left over from some other time. But uh, I don't know where this trail went to. It just kind of dead-ended right here. So I'm going to walk over here a little further and read that sign right there. This just shows where we're standing and where the buildings used to stand. Really aren't anything left there. They're scattered all out all over the uh, county uh, where farmers and other people had got them. We're standing right there. And if you look down the road, there ain't nothing there. As soon as you figure out which way the road was. And it was just straight up this little path. Nothing left. There is a foundation down there. I'll take that down, take you down there and show you that. Oh. I'm going to walk down to this one and see what that one is. And I'm not walking all the way over to that house. There's a visitor center, they say, somewhere. Let's go see what this sign says. It wasn't right what we did, that's for sure. But we were scared. It was like we got scared after 9-11. Scared, then you do some stupid things. But they're not stupid at the time because you're scared. This looks like a deliverance well, house is all along here, what it says. But uh, they're all gone. I don't even know if that one down there is an original spot. I know I'm just about done walking. I just wanted to show this to you guys. Yeah, we're out in farm country. There goes a big old hay truck. Glad I don't drive truck no more. There's some of the buildings over there. They got scattered out everywhere. Farmers came and bought them for very little. Moved these houses to barracks, I guess they were. They moved them to their own properties. Like I said about my father, I think he only bought one. But uh, here's the foundation. We're going to look at that, and I think that's about all we're going to be able to see here. Hope it's steady enough, because that's as steady as I can make it. But this looks like the foundation for one. I don't recall them being that big. I think this was something else. I know the one my father moved was not near this big. So. Well, that's that. About the only original thing standing. I don't know what for sure this is. I'm guessing this is some kind of guard post because it's right next to the guard tower. this is a little as you can see that thing ain't oh six by six maybe and if you were sitting in here this would be the view so I'm guessing all the houses, the houses were out that way highway 25 there I'm sure it wasn't even here Well, that's about all I can show you from here. Right now, pain's good. Feeling good. Just did a heck of a walk. I can't believe I did it in these boots here. Them boots are not made for walking. <laughs> but I'm glad I got them on. I don't like wearing tennis shoes on my bike. I hope you can hear me. I got a new fuzzy thing for my mic there. Try to knock this wind out. We're in Idaho and it's always windy. Anyway, we left my house. 
We drove about 20 some miles to get to here, but uh, we're out in the middle of the countryside here. And uh, the buildings are all gone. You see there's nothing behind me. Tower way over there. But I'm doing better for you that are following me. I'm out on the road, that's all that matters. Bye. I want to give a big thank you to Cole Small, the therapist that got me to where I am today. Without him, I don't know where I'd have been. Thank you, sir. You did me a great honor.